Well, after going almost three months without any videos at all, getting two videos out in possibly less than 24 hours is kind of ridiculous, but I really wanted to get this particular video out in Marchintosh, and the previous video was kind of the setup for it in some ways. Today, I'm going to put together a mini G5 cluster that is suitable for use in 2022. Recently, I've seen people on various YouTube channels and on Twitter throwing a bunch of shade at the G5 and especially at like this form factor of machine that it doesn't have any place today that, you know, even as a retro machine, it's not interesting. And anyway, I have of, of all the Mac gear, I have kind of a special place in my heart for the G5 towers. One of the last projects that I did at IBM was when I worked there many years ago, um, they were kind of toying with the idea of making a G5 based workstation that I know was at least going to run Linux and I assume AIX, I'm, uh, but I'm not really sure though. Um, and so I was doing some work on trying to get graphics drivers ready on that. And so for a while I had one of the uh, dual processor, dual core, g5 max in my office you know right right down here and you know aside from it sounding like a hurricane <laughs> it was a pretty nice machine it was it was pretty snappy i enjoyed using it i liked it i was irritated that it drew so much power that it needed a different kind of power plug but you know i could i can let those things slide so i still have a bit of a special place in my, in my heart for for these machines um this particular G5 came from the rescue in from my previous video. This G5 was donated by a friend of mine who is a Gen 2 developer and a fellow Mesa developer. And he has several of these that he has used off and on over the years for various Gen 2 porting tasks and for some Mesa development tasks and just for a variety of things. But he had at least one more than he strictly needed. So he donated th this one to the channel. Um, before I got into doing graphics on Linux, I had worked in the, the clusters group at Sequent, and then I was one of the early developers on the um, distributed lock manager project for the Linux kernel when IBM donated a bunch of code for their distributed lock manager out into open source. I did a bunch of the initial porting of that to Linux. And that was another funny story of, at the time, nobody was interested in a distributed lock manager, so they stopped having me work on it. And then about six months later, people were like, distributed lock manager? That's the coolest thing I've ever heard of. And then it you know, suddenly became super popular. But by that point, I was onto different things, and, and I never looked back from doing graphics work. So clustering together a couple of, couple of systems is like, right up my alley. So these have both been in storage for quite a while and have just been kind of hanging out. So first I'm going to clean them up because they've got like some stuff on them and, and this one's got some tape on the side and there's some, I'm going to clean them up a little bit. And then most of what I'm going to do in this video is going to be because of where I'm going to ultimately put these in my house. Um, they're mainly going to be a kind of a display piece when I have retro video game parties at my house. I need to build a thing to kind of keep them together so they won't get knocked over and build kind of the display for it. So a lot of this video is going to kind of focus on that, but it's going to be, that's also going to be the physical, like connecting the machines together. So I'm going to change the camera angle a little bit and get out the cleaning supplies and, and go to work on these.
these are shockingly heavy. Um, all right, so both of these cleaned up pretty nicely. I got a little bit of dust on them already. Okay. Um, so because of where these are going to be displayed, one thing that I've always kind of irritated me about these particular cases, I I really like them. I like the way they look. They are fantastic looking industrial design. They're both like, I don't know, like tough and elegant at the same time. I don't, I don't know what the right word is, but it's, it, they, they combine these, these opposing design elements in a way that just works. And that I, I really like, and I think a lot of other people like them too. The problem I have with it is that because of these rounded edges, they, they want to tip really easy. I mean, so one thing I did, I'm gonna have to pull these out and hopefully, hopefully this won't fall off. Is I off camera, I built a little, I built a little jig, and what this is gonna do is this is gonna slip in back here. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I did it right, and it's it is actually gonna slip in. All right, that side goes in. There we go. So where these are gonna be, these are gonna slide in right like that. And they're gonna, you know, they're gonna rely on each other for increased stability. They're not gonna, they're not gonna be able to tip over, which is a good thing because my video game parties do involve consumption of homebrewed beer and other things, so you know, some pe sometimes people aren't as uh, as coordinated as they might like to be. <laughs> um, so that's good on that. And the spacing, because my plan is I'm going to put a display in here when I have this set up. Hmm. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I've got a bunch of, like, Mac Minis. I have at least three or four of those. I could set those up on here. That would look cool. But if I'm gonna do that, I should have, hmm, should have like a shelf here. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right, that'd be awesome. All right, so I'm gonna set this up so that I can have the display in here, have these two wind tunnels going. <laughs> uh, and then across here, I'll put a shelf to put other stuff on, okay, I think. All right, I think I have a piece of wood that will work perfectly for that. But that's going to mean more off-camera carpentry. Um, I'm I'm terrible at soldering. I've, I'm trying to remember have I, if I've soldered in any of my videos yet. I'm terrible at it. And the only thing I think I'm worse at than soldering is carpentry. <laughs> so I feel like if I did the carpentry on camera... I'd have zero subscribers by the end of the video. <laughs> uh, and and my my inbox would be full of, you should never operate a power tool ever again, sir. You are a menace. All right, so, uh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get that other piece of wood. I'll have to find it and I'll put some stuff together. And all right, okay, this'll be good. This'll be good. All right, this is coming together. All right, so I did my, my carpentry off camera and it was a good thing too because, so the first, so, so this this is the, the shelf and what I wanted to do is I wanted to have it on here and I wanted to put some guides on it so that it would be held in place and not be able to move around and get jostled or whatever. So I tried to put on these guides and the first hole, the first screw, I was lazy and put it in without pre-drilling a hole and it split. And then two of the other ones, I was just a little bit too over. I drilled pilot holes for all the rest, but I was just a little too over excited, a little too trigger happy <laughs> with, the, with the drill and, and split anyway. So I'm going to, when I put this on, I'll have to make sure to put these ones facing back so that it looks a little bit better. But it does fit on there very nicely and it doesn't go anywhere. And... Hmm. Well, it's functional like that. But I feel like this looks ugly. 
I don't like the way that looks, especially against the nice metal cases. Wow, oh, that actually looks fairly bad. Um, hmm. All right, what can I do about this? Well, okay. All right, I think I know what I'll do. Because one thing about these is that I remember is especially at least on the the four the four core version when the fans really get going they're loud and they also even in spite of the weight of the case and everything there is a bit of vibration i don't know if that might be irritating to the stuff on top of here so i'll go get some fabric I don't have anything nice here, but I think there's a there's a craft store not too far from my house, and it's only like 6:30. Yeah, I can run up there and I can get some fabric, and I can put a piece, I can put some nice fabric on this, and I think I think that'll look much better. And yeah, all right, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so pause it, pause in filming. <laughs> I have, to, I have to come down to meet the camera. <laughs> um, I'm going to make a quick trip up to the craft store. Hopefully I'll still be able to get all this done today. Um, fingers crossed. You'll already know. <laughs> uh, I'll get some fabric and put it on this. And then hopefully I'll be able to, to finish up at least, at least this part. And then it'll be... All right. I'll at least be able to finish up this this part today and 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 get something out. Okay, you wait there while I go to the fabric store. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that actually was a pretty quick trip. Uh, went to the fabric store. Here's what I got. It's not quite exactly what I wanted. I was hoping that maybe I'd be able to find something that had like circuit board looking stuff or something like that on it but when i asked about that <laughs> the woman just kind of looked at me like you want what now I'm like all right you know what this is cool this is cool and it's 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 soft so it's, it's like a a pajama kind of material although it says on here not intended for children's sleepwear but it is still that kind of really soft like this would make really good really good pillowcases um so who knows if if I have some left over, I may may do may do something like that. We'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back off camera because I think it's gonna take a while of fiddling and probably some some cursing and hopefully I won't cut off my finger with the scissors because um, I'm using some actual legit fabric shears and they are super sharp. They will they will they will cut you and they won't feel bad about doing it either. And let's have a. And I love, the part I love about them is how they come in like this, this scabbard. Oh. <laughs> anyway, all right. So that's, that's, that's enough dorkiness for now. All right, I'm going to go back off camera again, and I'm going to trim this fabric. And I think I'll probably just go ahead and finish this part of the assembly off camera. And then I'll probably readjust the shot so we can get a better look at how the whole, the whole thing, uh, whole thing fits together. And then, uh, yeah, all right, we'll go from there. Cool. All right. There was a couple of missteps along the way, and I ended up deciding to deviate a little bit from my originally stated plan. I realized that once I had the shelf up here and I just kind of draped the fabric across it, that the angle where people will normally look at the setup, these these pieces of metal will will be somewhat in the way so i i kind of added some padding i guess on it so i got this all put back together and and it all fits so i think it's good i'm gonna um i mean i think now it's just time to uh to try benchmarking this thing so i'm gonna take it apart real quick i'm gonna move it i'm gonna move it to where it's actually well, to at least pretty close to where it's actually going to go.
So in case you haven't figured it out by now, this was an April Fool's Day joke. I just wanted to make these two Macs into a seat. I'm definitely not the first person to convert a couple of these super sturdy cases into a bench or a clock or a barbecue grill or any number of other ridiculous things. I'm going to put a link to at least uh, one blog post that I found where people have done a bunch of really creative stuff with, with these old cases. Um, but yes, this is the benchmarking. <laughs> Hashtag dad joke. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. I'll be back next time with some kind of a more serious video. Um, I had to reshoot a lot of the takes before because I just kept laughing. Because <laughs> I knew all along where this was going. And like, Anyway, I'll be back with a serious video soon. Until then, try to remember the good stuff. <laughs>